Hey, this is Annex, and in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how my Novation Base Station 2 is set up and one of the songs that I'm working on. And I'm going to be using, as always, uh, Ableton Live 10. And yeah, I'll just talk about how I have it set up as an audio input, how I have the track set up, um, how I can go back and forth using it uh, with MIDI versus uh, using it as an instrument to record audio out and yeah, how it fits with different parts of my track. So here you can see on the screen, I have a, yeah, just a little song in progress. And I have a couple of, I have two tracks here that I've made using the Base Station 2. So the Base Station 2, it's a hardware synth. Uh, so meaning it can actually produce sound from itself. So it's not just like, a MIDI keyboard or something where you're just triggering the notes to play through a VST that's in your DAW. You're actually creating the sound itself from the instrument you're playing. So this is why it has a audio out. So that's this jack here. And that goes to the audio interface so it can yeah, record audio or put audio through your DAW. So when I play this, I'm hearing it actually through my DAW. Uh, it also has a MIDI out. So this MIDI out uh, also serves as a MIDI in, so it can go both ways. So you can uh, have notes set up in your Ableton uh, that trigger this instrument to play. So they go from your computer to this instrument, and then it outputs the audio back to your DAW, and it can go the other way. So you can just use this as a typical MIDI keyboard uh, without the audio uh, to yeah, play notes that are recorded into your DAW. So uh, with that, I am going to show you what it can look like and sound like first. So you can do uh, bass sounds, of course, as a bass station, but it also you can do you know, arps and higher lead instruments. Um, it only has a mono out, so there's two types. There's mono and stereo. Uh, stereo is where you have a stereo field with two tracks that work with each other to make like a breadth of space, like a wideness in the sounds. But this mono is with one, it's a single, yeah, single track channel. And it has a particular mono cable to reflect that. So this is what it looks like when it's recorded. So because it's a, yeah, a bass frequency, but also a really powerful instrument, it creates like a really, yeah, dense waveform. And that's where you get like the power and the feel from it. This is what it sounds like. Um, just as a word of caution, when I play this, uh, I'll play it for you later, like on this, um, yeah, on the hardware, you're going to hear it louder because it's also an audio input um, to my OBS studio that I'm recording on, uh, along with my microphone. <laughs> so it's going to be extra loud when I do that, and I hope it's not too loud. So this is what it sounds like recorded, for example. So that would be like one of the yeah really bass frequencies. And it has like a bunch of presets, uh, but what I'd like to do is find a preset like in the kind of feel that I'm going for and then tweak it because there's a lot to learn here and you can go like really like, skew really easily and then not know what you're doing. So I like to start with a preset and work my way out. And this was one that I started with uh, one of the presets that you select uh, from this top left corner here and just added like more distortion and uh, yeah, different oscillations and different envelopes to it. So when it records, it records like any other audio uh, in the DAW. And this is what it looks like. And this is what uh, you can also do it with kind of arpeggios, arpeggiators, and, and higher frequencies like this. So here I was going for like a Stranger Things feel in this set. So you can actually use it to make layers on top of each other. So it's not like you're just limited to doing like your, your base lines with this or only one layer, you can double it up. And I'll just show you what this sounds like uh, yeah, with the rest of the stuff I was working on in this project.
And this, um, this is a drum rack here that you see, this yellow track. And I'm triggering stuff with my Ableton push here that I won't talk about. Um, but here you see just the, the percussion I have already built it into a, a drum rack that I made so that I can just play it out using MIDI. Yeah, so that's how I would layer some of this stuff, for example. It's just a fun track. Uh, yeah, so that's how it looks when it's recorded in audio and also when you can combine it uh, with other layers. So this I'm going for like a cool 80s vibe, which I usually don't like, but I really want to like it because I really want to use this thing more. Uh, so what I did to get that, so to get it set it up, uh, you want to go into your preferences in Ableton and go to audio. And you have to set the audio input device as your audio interface that this um, this audio out cable, this audio out jack is connected to. So in my case, this is a Steinberg device and yours can be whatever, I don't know. Uh, but this is what mine is and it's also what my microphone goes through. And the audio output is just the same as normal. Uh, you also wanna look at the input buffer size. So the buffer is like, yeah, how much room it creates, between, like wheel room or like room for air um, where it can like, control for yeah a lot of stuff that's happening that negatively affects the quality of your sound so the higher the buffer the better quality of your sound is going to be to a certain point um, but it also creates latency so that's why you see this overall latency down here so if i increase the input buffer size the overall latency also increases and it's the same as the output buffer size so input buffer is when i would play this audio and it receives it into the computer, into the DAW, and the output um, buffer or output latency is when it's playing it back to you, so when you hear it. So the overall latency is just a, a combination, so in addition of those two, and the driver error compensation. Um, so just play around with it because you can hear when it doesn't sound right, <laughs> um, but you want to get it so you can actually play this more or less in real time with your computer, with your DAW. Um, yeah, so it's actually like working with it and not like doing this first and then recording and then stopping and then going into your DAW. So it should be like the integration is what the benefit is here. Uh, and then also in the MIDI settings, so I have this as uh, both as an input and an output. And I do that because I also want to play MIDI notes from my computer onto here. So this means I could make like complex melodies or whatever actually in my DAW or in my piano or wherever and have those recorded as MIDI clips and have those MIDI clips play out to this uh, device. So that's why I made it as a both input and an output here on my MIDI ports. Okay, so I set up a MIDI track. So it's this one here. So there's two types of tracks, audio and MIDI. Uh, when I am recording and playing this audio from this device, it's, uh, yeah, I can actually do it on a MIDI track too. Okay, so this is a MIDI track with an external instruments on it. So this is just in the Ableton, I think, instruments part. Uh, the MIDI is going to the Space Station 2. And I think it's uh, the default global MIDI channel for this device is channel 2. So it doesn't, it's not really necessary to set these global MIDI channels if you only have like one device on or something but it does make it a lot faster so I recommend you take uh, the time to do that because it really speeds things up a lot so I have uh, this is going uh, to MIDI channel 2 and it's receiving audio from uh, the second channel on my that audio input remember that's what we that's what we set here. So that's the audio interface, the audio input device. And I have uh, two things on that. So one is for the mic. This is where you see one here. So this green bar is lighting up because I'm speaking and it's receiving input into one. And there's also two, which is this device. And Ableton is nice because you can see when it's yeah, getting information, when it's being used with this green, uh, this dynamic green thing. So here I have the audio from 
to the second channel on my audio interface. And I have, uh, I didn't set any hardware latency. Um, you can play around with that, uh, but it's, yeah, it's like kind of setting latency, but in the opposite direction. So it takes some time to get used to it, uh, especially when you include this hardware latency with the, the audio uh, and the other latencies, I mean, the input and output latencies in your um, audio settings in Ableton. So I'll just see what works for you. And then I have a, yeah, just a limiter on it. You don't need it, but uh, this thing can go really, really loud and it's really nice anyway, so you don't really need a limiter. Uh, I just like it. So I have uh, on this track we're looking at, I have the MIDI in from the base station too and then all channels, and then the monitor is also in. And this means I can play it without the track being arms. If it's off, usually if it's off, it won't be receiving this information, so it won't be playing, but because I know I want to use this right now, I would send it to off in. And this audio is just going to the group I have. So in every kind of collection, so in every like live set, I have different groups within that, like different songs, and this would be one of the songs. So all of these tracks are grouped under this, yeah, this song, this song, and the outro. So that's why it has the audio out to the, yeah, to this kind of mini master channel, and then that one goes to the master. So in this way, I can also control the volumes of the respective songs and tracks within them. Uh, yeah, consequentially. So this is the setup. And and right now this is set on a um, ARP setting. So this is like preset 25. And it's not really what I want to say if I want like a big fat bass. So I'm gonna put it to another preset I made so you can Start with whatever preset you want to start with and then tweak it and then you can actually save it as a patch uh, and then return to it. So you could be working in multiple songs with multiple patches and when you exit the DAW, it's not going to forget about it. So that information is actually stored in the hardware. So this probably is quite loud because you're hearing it a bit double. So here we're playing it to a MIDI track um, and the benefit of also doing that is we can have a MIDI that makes it play itself. But to be able to see those tracks, uh, so those MIDI clips, I have to go from changing monitor from in to monitor auto or monitor off. So this means I can play this MIDI track back with the device. And then what I'm doing here is just changing the patches, so I don't actually have to go in with my fingers and play this because it would be really hard to get it this evenly um, if I'm playing especially over a number of bars because your room for air um, yeah, it gets smaller and smaller as the time goes on. So in this way I can play something with these clips and then change the presets to here and see how it sounds kind of as it goes. So say we found a um, melody or a bass line that we really like and we want to record it. So now we're hearing the audio, but we're not recording it anywhere. We're not seeing the waveform anywhere. And this is a MIDI track, so we need to make an audio track. So this is what I've set up here. And on this track, you want to take the audio from that MIDI track. So that one is called this, the external out. And 
And then to be able to record that, we have to arm this audio track. So press this arm button at the bottom and we can start playing our MIDI track. So there I was just changing a few settings to show that it'll record for you kind of on the fly. Uh, so anything that you're doing, uh, either with these mini clips or with these instruments, it's going to record as it plays over time. So actually as you hear it as well. Uh, so you can just kind of, yeah, fiddle around and see what you like. And then if you like something, you can go back to it this way. So Ableton does has a, have a feature called this capture. So if you play something that you like, kind of in, in MIDI notes, and then you go back to this capture. I don't know why I put it there. Then it's going to remember the last thing that you played. Let's try that again. So I'm just pressing this capture up here so it gives me the history of what I've put in and it remembers like a really really long way back so if you're just like jamming and seeing what sounds good you can say okay I really like the last kind of 16 bars I did so then you just go to this capture and it plays there and if you want to record it um, yeah you arm the record track that is output to And then it's going to record that with the setting that you have on your hardware. Yeah, so I hope uh, I gave you a good introduction to how you can set up your Novation Base Station 2 into Ableton, um, how you work with both MIDI and audio with it back and forth, uh, how you can play MIDI from Ableton to it, and also record the audio that you, yeah, that the device creates. Um, I also talked about the settings, so your audio input and output, and yeah, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'm still learning this thing too, and I think it's a really, yeah, cool device. Uh, so maybe I'll do another one about how to actually play around with the settings on it more, not just the patches.